if you find adventure at the click of a button, or from the turn of a page, or the casting of a die. Join your hosts, Conniff and Shiloh, on an unforgettable journey. Questing the Multiverse. Welcome to episode 20 of Questing the Multiverse, Christmas edition. We have a very lovely, it's not the word I was going to use, but we've, we're committed to it, guest named Jordan. He used to run with me the No Cube Zone board game podcast. And then, of course, we have the ever illustrious Shiloh Waltz. R.I.P. the I... No Cube Zone. <laughs> I was wondering which of you would speak up. <laughs> the no Both of us at the same time, naturally. The No Cube Zone, Jordan, is a lot like Calvin and Hobbes. We quit before we could burn people out of us. And now it's this cult class. It's like Firefly. The Firefly TV show. Calvin and Hobbes, you know. So anyway, uh, welcome, Jordan, to Questing the Multiverse. This is Shiloh and I's, I don't even know if you've listened to any episode, but this is Shiloh and I's jaunt through all sorts of things nerd-related, including occasionally board game-related stuff, D&D, books, TV shows, movies, whatever. Obviously, mostly video games, because it was, one, a very big year for video games, and that's just kind of where we find ourselves. But we're happy. You are our first guest, by the way on the show so so proud to be the first guest so how are you who are you for our (laughs) listeners who don't know and uh what the heck have you been up to these past year and a half whatever since we uh, been a while (laughs) we had you on for the last christmas episode of gg party chat it was it was was. um yeah i'm i'm jordan hopper as kind of said i'm a former host of the no cube zone I technically think you gave me all the assets to it, kind of, yep. and I've been toying with like bringing it back, but right now it'd just be like a one-man show, and I don't know that anyone wants to listen to just me talk about board games for reasons. <laughs> so that's where it sits as like a fun idea in my mind until someone else is like, "Hey, I want to do a board game podcast." I'm like, "All right, guess what I got? For <laughs> guess what I got? Assets, and I still pay for the hosting. <laughs> so the episodes are still out there. I'm still paying five dollars a month to Libsyn to host those. So I I'm doing that as well for GG Party Chat. But I was thinking about that the other day because I still saw them. You know, I can go find No Cube Zone on Spotify or, or wherever, and I'm like, oh yeah, I, I guess Jordan's still paying for that. Hosting. Oh yeah, five bucks a month I, every like the first of the month. I feel uh, like there these websites in charge. Well, I feel like these websites should have some sort of like uh, clause in the usage of their site that's like, if your show has been around for so many years, old episodes will just stay around mm-hmm. without you having to pay. Right. But that's how they get their money. But I like kind of said, we're kind of like Firefly. There's like 14 great episodes out there, and they're just there. They are what they are. You can go find them. I think it's like at least 25, 26. I, you said 20, episode 20 of uh, Questing the Multiverse, and I was like, I don't think we ever got that far. We did, though. We did a full season. Me? Yeah, season and then like seven know. episodes, and then it was just... It I believe you. Yeah, I, I can go look. I haven't logged into that in... A while. The cubes were invading. So, listener, if you know board games, <laughs> there's Ameritrash, there's Euro. Those are kind of the two camps. I am firmly in the Ameritrash side. Jordan was not so firmly in the Euro side. But right. we played into that a lot. And then the No Cube Zone, you know, came about out of this. But uh, that it was a great show. So, aside from that, I have noticed you have been doing a ton of videography work. It's true. How is that I, going for you? Like I said, slowly uh, off air, I said I'm slowly turning into Stephen Rippey, who was our other host on <laughs> yes. um, the No Cube Zone. So, yeah, I've been doing a lot of videography work. I'm attempting to uh, grow that business to a place where that could be what I do to yeah. um, you know, pay my bills and all that good stuff. But yeah, right now I'm a lot of wedding videos, filming a lot of weddings, editing, all those kinds of things, trying to step up some marketing and such on Instagram and 
things like that. So yeah, I've been, been pretty busy with that, but I do find the time to play the occasional board game and video game. Like I said, again, off air, we play a lot of Mario Kart at my house because I, <laughs> I, like Mr. Conniff, have four kids. My kids are just a little bit older. Yes. So we can get some, some Mario Kart going on and um, I dominate just S- for still. the record. Okay. Well, I was going to... I cannot be beaten in Mario Kart, so... <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was going to be my question is since you have older kids are they getting to the point where they finally can go toe to toe with you so my yeah. oldest he beat me once and then tried to rub it into my face and then I politely reminded him that he had handicaps on the whole time so my son is getting closer <laughs> to okay. beating me in Super Smash Brothers I have a 7 year old son and he's like I have to try when we play Super Smash Bros. Before it was just I could just grab a home run bat and I was just launching them <laughs> left like just everyone bait was him, just gone. Bait him into and then just <laughs> all right swing wham. <laughs> yeah, and I mean I would yeah and like uh, we'd play like a five minute match and I'd rack up like fifty kills. Okay. In Super Smash Bros. I have to try a little bit more. I can't just home run bat everyone now. So the day will probably this is the beginning come, of the end. But then not yet, not yet. I still have my crown. Well, Well, as I mentioned, this is the Christmas episode. And listener, this is what it's going to look like. We're just going to chit chat for a bit. Uh, Shiloh and I definitely have some things to talk about with the Game Awards. Jordan, chime in to whatever capacity you feel like. (laughs) I won't be very long. Uh, And then Jordan has prepared for us a eBay price guessing game. Now, He's done this. Well, you did the same one for GG Party Chat No Cube Zone, and then so you've done it at least as, twice, which is. I think this is the third one I've done. Yeah, but like it's very well done. The items, as you will find, listener, are just wacky. So if you're listening to this in <laughs> audio only, consider finding the YouTube version of this if you want to follow along with the. PowerPoint presentation that he's put together. I'll have that on the um, the video version of this show. Um, but Shiloh, what have you been up to in this past week? Have you been jolly? Been full of the Christmas spirit, or are you channeling Scrooge because work is? I'm doing my best not to become Scrooge. Uh, that is generally how i deal with the holidays um it's it's generally a battle between my festive nature and uh, the outlying forces that would be it's basically i'm a jedi and i'm constantly surrounded by sith and they're just See, I, I was thinking more of like a uh Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde kind of thing. Like, what, yeah, what yeah, the, it is a little bit more internal. What would be yeah. the, in, <laughs> the antithesis to Scrooge? So you've got the Mr. Scrooge yeah. and, I don't know. Um, well, the throwback to, I think, the first one, of the, like uh, Cornelius Yukon. Is he more of, like, oh, the, the lighter know. side? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. Um, but so far this year, it's been pretty good, manageable at work. Yeah. Um, we got one order for a table, which is nice because able. I think I mentioned that. Did I mention that last podcast? Yes. Maybe not. Yep. Oh, yeah, I did. I don't remember. Well, Old and all that. Yeah, thank you. Um, so that's uh, we've been slowly trying to figure out where we stand on that and getting uh, just trying to coordinate times for my dad and mm. trying to figure out where what we're going to do and all that stuff. Especially being this time of year, it's a little tough. But, um, yeah, other than that, uh, video game-wise, really, not much. Um, a little bit of WoW. Um, yeah, that's really about it, honestly. A little bit of Guild Wars too. That's all I've really had time to really I'm jump in and play. So, Well, I feel that. I, it's this. I was telling my mother because she asked me a question like five days ago via text, and neither my wife or I responded. And I was like, and of course, like she doesn't see how busy things are with 
all these little kids running around. You know, mm -hmm. Rowan has Taekwondo testing. Our daughter just had a ballet recital. Like, this is all a new territory for us. So, Jordan, you probably know this because you're, you know, your kids are like a few years ahead of mine. Like, th mm -hmm. this time of year is, is just the worst for being super busy. Uh, so I get that totally. All I've played is Fortnite, surprisingly. But they added Lego Fortnite, which is basically Lego Minecraft. And mm. it's a, a ton of fun. I've, I've, like, I've showed my kids it. I've played with, you know, some of our friends, Shiloh. And it's, I mean, you hate Minecraft, I know. So this is automatically not something that you'd be interested in. But like for kids, like it's a it's a slam dunk. And so Fortnite knows what they're doing with that. But um yeah. Okay, do you guys want the brief Game Awards mention thing first or the two Christmas icebreaker questions first? Ooh. Let's well, we've started Christmas already. So okay. let's go ahead and do the Christmas icebreaker. Then we'll do a little bit of the video game and then we'll jump right into eBay. Yeah. Okay. So Christmas icebreaker, then game awards, then the Jordan Hopper special, baby. Mm. Let's go. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> the ice first icebreaker question and listener, I'd be curious to know yours as well, but what is your least favorite Christmas song? So everyone has a favorite. I really like Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. But what is your least favorite? Like the one where you're listening to the radio and it comes on and you're like, Ugh. Ugh. So, <laughs> Just do it, Geralt. And, <laughs> yeah. Uh. So m mine is that uh, it's either Paul McCartney or John Lennon where it's like, the spirit's up. T -t 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 has or something Christmas time. I hate, I don't know. Yeah, I hate that song. Wonderful Christmas that one. time. Despise it. It is, and and I think part of this was it would get played on the radio prior to Thanksgiving, and it would always be that song that would like <laughs> pop the you know the whatever into the Christmas season before <laughs> it was ready. Because I was like, I have a strict like don't listen to Christmas music before Thanksgiving policy. And that one was always the one that would ruin that because mm. some radio station would be like, let's, let's just play Paul McCartney. Are, yeah, it's are not you really that person, Christmas. Jordan? You're raising your hand. No, I have a question. <laughs> okay. Correct me if, are you also not the person who leaves their Christmas tree up until Valentine's Day? <laughs> Hold on. Valentine's up. Day. <laughs> I am that person. Okay. What are you getting at? So, <laughs> like, if we're going to, like, draw this firm line in the stand, no, stepping on Thanksgiving's toes, blah, 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 blah. But never mind. I think there's at least two holidays between <laughs> Christmas and <laughs> Valentine's Day that we're just like, let's just tread right on over these. I mean, President's Day and MLK Day, I guess. But New Year's Day. New Year's Day. Yeah, but New, New Year's and Christmas, though, are like... They're literally Most, only a week apart. A decent number of people I know either have their fake trees down or their That's real trees insane. to the curb that week yeah. between Christmas and New Year's. Trees so. need to go by my birthday, which is January 5th. Trees don't need to be. And that is technically, I think, right. the 12th or 13th day of Christmas. Yeah. If you look it up or whatever. Why don't you sing us the song? Conniff's able to watch no, the it's... Super Bowl sitting next to his Christmas, <laughs> Christmas tree. Yes. tree. <laughs> listen, listen. It's because January is so depressing. Aside from Shiloh's birthday. The That's rest, depressing too. The rest, <laughs> one year older. One, just keep digging the grave. Uh, no. yeah. we, we all live in northern states. Like November is just as depressing. <laughs> like I don't, sure. I just don't. But because I, there's it's, that, it's a anticipation. strange line in the sand that you've drawn, sir. That's all I'm well, saying. <laughs> you're you're not wrong. I'm a strange kind of fellow, I guess, as you are fully aware. Okay, but least Christmas song. E either of you have Ooh. one that's just oh like, yeah. Oh, Shiloh's already all right. Let's hear it. Go. Oh. Uh, the 12 days of Christmas that goes Speaking into that up. category. And yet he knew that, <laughs> how many days of Christmas it was. That's not a good song at all. It's just, na, 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 na. yeah, we get it. 
you can stop there it's, it's also a wild number of birds that get gifted yeah <laughs> yeah the math is silly. pretty crazy it's very, of presents. yeah not not good uh and deck the halls i don't like that song either it's, again it's stupid okay what about little drummer boy i like that one it's all right i'm not See, a big fan i guess both like all of those songs are like ones that like I, most Christmas music to me is mostly just like a background track where I'm not really paying attention to it the most like most like right. all of these songs that you guys have problems with like if I sit and listen to the words I'm like this is kind of dumb <laughs> but if it's just like playing and I'm just like doing whatever else I'm like okay the one that annoys me the most I think is um, Mary did you know <clears throat> Okay. Just because Why is that? it's like the lady always sounds like super whiny, and I feel like we say "Mary, did you know?" like four hundred times. Like we do. No, she didn't. <laughs> she didn't know. Okay. She had no idea. <laughs> Stop asking <laughs> the question. She didn't know. She had no clue what was going on. It's like the um, it's like the clip from SpongeBob where they call the Krusty Krab. He's like, "Is this the Krusty Krab?" Mary, did you know? No, this is Patrick. Mary, did you know? No, this is Patrick. No, this is Patrick. <laughs> this is Patrick. <laughs> right. I never thought about that, though. But I suppose you're right, though. Like, the more you listen to it, the weirder they are. Especially that one that's kind of, uh, maybe it's cold outside or whatever, is kind of like, Ugh. Yeah, mm. that's a little... Or Santa baby. Yeah. Or it's the, is it rocking around the Christmas tree where people have... And the like the the real lyric is maybe we'll have some pumpkin pie, but people will uh, write the text later. We'll have some effing pie, and if you listen to it, like your brain can like, <laughs> yeah, it makes it work. <laughs> people like their pie. Uh, okay, so you said deck the halls. What is the okay? So deck the halls of with whatever. What is the next Bowls line? Bowls of holly. Bowls of holly. Bowel. No, it's like it, bowels. It's like bowels. <laughs> you know, it's not like bowels. Like, <laughs> but it's something like that. I think. I don't know. I have to look it up. Well, we all it's a strange it word. But it, it, it is sort of like bowels, but it's oh, bows, like bows, but spelled B-O-U-G-H. I think. Yeah. I always, as a kid, thought it was balls. Deck the halls with balls of holly <laughs> or bells. That Deck the halls with sense. bells of holly. Well, halls yeah, and balls bows. rhymes. So. B O U G H S. What does that yeah, mean? Bows. Does anyone know? Well, again, if only we had tiny computers room. in our pockets. We don't. We have a tiny giant. Mine's in my room. other room, so I didn't make noise. <laughs> Look, at, he's committed to the podcasting thing. A main branch of a tree. There you go. That's really lame. Or, um, well, dumb. I don't know. Apple boughs laden with the blossom. only the only good memory and the only part that I like about that song is that it's featured in a Christmas story when <laughs> when they go to the Chinese oh, restaurant yeah. yep. Christmas and they're singing that song. <laughs> it's so good. Well, that's funny. But other than that, no, I don't want to hear that song. Okay. The next this is like Conniff's speed dating questions, which is not as mm. exciting as Shiloh's speed dating questions. Which listener, if you are not familiar, is a little um, thing we did. What, the word just escaped me. A f- segment. A segment. Segment. Yeah, that's the one. On GG Party Chat. The feature. RIP. RIP. Also. Yeah, yeah you're not wrong. Uh, okay. Least favorite Christmas snack. And you cannot say fruitcake because I don't think anybody willingly snacks on fruitcake. No. So I do not like candy canes, really. They're just a little bit too... I I like the concept of them, and my kids love them. But, like, for me, like... It's eating one, yeah. This eating one is just annoying. I like peppermint a lot. I I love peppermint. I do like like peppermint. But, But yeah, the actual candy cane itself. Yeah, yeah. especially the big ones. And you're like, okay, I'm going to gnaw this until it's sharp (laughs) enough to gouge someone's eye out. You make a shank. I make a shank. And then you've got a serial killer weapon of choice. Second to an icicle. Yeah. So it's kind of like, they're just kind of meh. You guys have any any other one that comes to mind, or Ooh, am I just um, weird? 
Well, like, don't answer that. We know the I answer. I really already. think I love gingerbread, so that's can't okay. can't mess with that. Um, I guess that would be considered a snack. I can't. I don't. I don't know. What do you mean by a snack? I don't know. Like cook, which like cookie? Maybe there's a type of cookie you don't like. I can't really. Yeah, I just can't think of any. Well, those little um, what are they? My mom used to make them. They're like wedding cake, wedding cookies. You know those are. What's they're just on covered them? in powdered sugar, and they're oh yep. They have chocolate on the inside. No. Okay, my mom made something like that, but it would have nuts and then like Hershey Kisses. But that they'd be like these little. Ma- yeah, they were good, but I know what you mean. Like just too much powdered. Yeah. Sugar. Well, yeah, they're just I don't know. There's something weird about them. That I'm not fond of. So yeah, I don't. Those I'm not too fond of, and I don't know. They almost taste like they're but just an overly powdered sugar shortbread. But I really like uh, shortbread, so it balances. That wouldn't out. make any sense that I wouldn't like that. I don't know. Jordan, do you have one? Jordan, I'm scrolling through a list of <laughs> things. This one so I just... don't like. This one I don't like. <laughs> oh, this one's great. I mean. I'm not like, not like hate it, but I'm not like wild about eggnog. I don't, does that I am count? Right there with you. I actually, yeah. I just don't like it. No offense, Weevil. I know you love eggnog. You just posted about eggnog in Discord. I'm sorry, yeah. but I'm with. I Jordan like on eggnog. This one. It's yeah, not as, it's not as good counts. without booze yeah. in it, though. So that's uh, I don't really drink it that much. Yeah, you don't drink. So. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, like, well, you, you don't, you can't really put anything else other than booze in it. Like, what are you gonna do? Like, oh, well, just substitute the booze for sweet tea. That'll work. No, right? Oh no, that's like awful. Just put some water in it. No, that's, that's like something that could make people drink on Fear Factor. Is who would yeah. <laughs> mix with sweet tea? Eggnog with iced tea, <laughs> with, with unsweet sweet tea. or sweet tea? That's, oh, I don't sweet know. Tea, Both like, would be gross. <laughs> Both would be nasty. I okay, oh, yeah. I'm with you on that one. So, eggnog. Unless you were to put like coffee, that would be all right. But then, it, so you, then your so coffee would get cold. Basically, you you're try... subbing out your coffee creamer for eggnog. Yeah, that would be. be basically, I mean, that wouldn't be terrible. I guess it wouldn't be terrible. I'm just. It's gonna be a no for me. So, all right, <laughs> final you, final one. Uh, all right. Instead of least favorite Christmas movie. This one everybody has an answer for. Oh I think, man, typically. No. mine is a Christmas story. So Shiloh already mentioned that, but yeah, growing up that was always my favorite. And then I did like the Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer, the claymation one as a kid. Yeah, you can't watch it now. It's on Prime, but you have to you have to buy it. I think. What? So, yeah, it used to come on like the network. Saw it comes on CBS. Is, we have YouTube TV set. YouTube TV is set to record it. Yeah, CBS airs all of those like every year. It's like a tradition. Yeah, oh, I haven't had like TV in so long. <laughs> Just my my in laws pay for YouTube TV uh, and they give us the login. So nice, nice. Yeah, mine would be a Christmas story or uh, Christmas vacation, probably. That's my second one. And we've got a party coming up with some mm-hmm. local friends and Christmas vacations on that that mm-hmm. docket i don't like Chris, a christmas story you don't like a christmas story i don't i watched it i tried to watch it several times because everyone talks about it i just yeah. i have <laughs> never so this is your least favorite christmas movie it would a christmas story would probably be my least favorite christmas movie wow, wow. i just don't <laughs> i just don't get it i don't get it at all like i don't get the draw yeah like, mm-hmm. at all um and like so there's a place not far from my house now i live in a new place where so for halloween they'll put out these hay bales and they'll paint them like some sort of characters yeah and then for christmas they'll repaint them so usually after halloween so like we're talking november 1st (laughs) cardinal sin in mr connor's book they'll be out they'll start painting these things and so by the middle of november they're all set up so like this year it was um they did Sesame Street was okay. the main, and now they have um, the Grinch. So like they had like an Oscar the Grouch, and then they just repainted him to make him the Grinch. They had like a Big Bird and a um, 
anyways last year they the christmas thing was a christmas story and so like ah. they had this big tall thing that they just made the lamp you at <laughs> least know the, about the lamp i know about the leg lamp but i was just a like fabulous so... prize or award or whatever it is a major just, award major every time award. i drove by it it's like i just don't get it favorite christmas movie i mean there's a lot of good ones it's hard to really narrow it down home alone comes to okay. mind yeah and I would say like Home Alone 2 is like basically like an extension of that movie. So yeah, they're interchangeable. But I think both Home Alone and Home Alone 2 are fantastic. His parents got to stop forgetting about their kid. So I know. Yeah. <laughs> That's a problem. Well, someone's, someone was like the biggest fiction in that movie nowadays would be that they woke up at what, like 7 a.m. and submit it to the airport for like their 9 a.m. flight in Chicago. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, in Chicago, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, you need to leave at like 4 a.m. <laughs> if you're lucky. Okay, I like that. Well, gentlemen. But, uh, like, um, Christmas Vacation is a classic. Like, I love that yes. movie. I hadn't seen that until a few years after um, I got married. And we went over to some friends and watched it. And I was like, this is like, you know, as a kid... Like, maybe a Christmas story represents your idea of Christmas. But now with in-laws and kids and, you know, being married and stuff, I watch Christmas Vacation. I'm like, this is literally every family (laughs) (laughs) get-together. Christmas or not. Complete with that crazy relative that goes and kidnaps your boss or something, you know, (laughs) wild. It's just such a good movie. So we are watching that soon for our 2021 and up party. So that's going to be exciting. I wouldn't be more surprised if I woke up tomorrow morning with my head sewn to the carpet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay. So we have one little piece of business to take care of before Jordan carries us on this eBay journey. Uh, and that is the Game Awards. So last episode we talked what our... I guess what we wanted to win and what we not what we voted for on the player choice um and uh it's come and gone now the show was like three hours long jordan you mentioned either off air on or i don't remember we've been chatting for a while tonight that you don't play much video games do Mm -hmm. what do you know about the game awards and what do you know Uh, about this year's game awards well i knew that there were there was a 1200 pound gorilla and an 800 pound gorilla in Baldur's Gate 3 and the new Zelda game. Yeah, that's what I th- would have said, too, if I was in and your shoes. Those were kind of like 1A and 1B, and then there was kind of a swath below that of yes. everything else. So that is basically exactly how it went down, with the exception of Tears of the Kingdom, which is the Breath of the Wild sequel, was kind of unremarkable at the awards. I think it only won best action adventure or best action game or something to that effect. Yeah, did win that one. Yeah. Now, go on. Is is it because, and I'm just speaking from a layman here, so is it because it's seen as basically an expansion, if you will, to Breath of the Wild? Like, we're just expanding upon that? Is that it? more like Baldur's Gate 3 I think again this is just what I'm understanding from yeah. someone who's played neither of these games okay was Baldur's Gate 3 was even though it's the third in the Baldur's Gate thing like you don't have to have played one and two to have any understanding that of what's correct. going on there yeah but it's like it was so much of a different thing than like the other games and like a whole new experience whereas maybe this Tears of the Kingdom felt more like Breath of the Wild 2. Like, we're just like continuing Breath of the Wild. Is that maybe why it was less remarked? Because a couple of years ago, Breath of the Wild was highly remarked. Yeah. That is my theory. My theory, ultimately, if you look at all the nominees, there was Alan Wake 2, BG3, Spider Man 2, Tears of the Kingdom, uh, Resident Evil 4, and I think Super Mario Bros. Wonder. Was that six? I don't know if there's a if there's another one that I'm missing. Well, it didn't win, so who cares? Um, 
all of those are pretty much just really good games in that franchise, right? So like Spider-Man 2, great game. But when you, 10 years from now, you look back, you're going to be like, yeah, like those PlayStation 4 Spider-Man games, you know, Spider-Man and then the Miles Morales DLC and then Spider-Man 2, like they're really good. But Spider-Man 2 isn't going to be singled out. It's going to be included with Spider-Man 1 and Miles Morales. Same thing with the Tears of the Kingdom. You know, people are going to look back in 10 years and be like, man, that season of Legend of Zelda was so great. We got Breath of the Wild, followed up by Tears of the Kingdom, whatever come ne- you know comes next. That was so good. Alan Wake 2, probably same thing. Super Mario Bros. Wonder is a similar thing where it's like, okay, here's this great iteration of the Mario formula. But it's more of the same, just a great version. Mm-hmm. Baldur's Gate 3 is head and shoulders above its two uh, previous games to the point where, like, it's not even in the, those aren't even in the same conversation. They're very different games, one, the way that the, they mechanically play. But, like, 10 years from now, people are going to be talking strictly about Baldur's Gate 3 and some of the impact it had on the industry. Mm -hmm. And that is, in my opinion, why we saw uh, that game walk away with six awards. And those awards are Best Community Support, Best Multiplayer, Player's Choice, Best RPG, Best Performance, so the voice actor for Asterion won, uh, Neil Newbin, and then Game of the Year. Because that game is like what breath of the wild was when it came out is that's kind of how I'd explain mm. it to someone who has no eggs in the basket. Yeah. Just innovation. Yeah. Uh, takes precedence. So, uh, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't, I'm not a <laughs> member of yeah. the game Anything. award society or whatever they, whatever, whoever makes these decisions, but I would assume that that would, that would be one of the, uh, most important things that's like, probably why Elden Ring won yes I have last year just because of what I've heard about Baldur's Gate 3 I've toyed with the idea of either buying a PlayStation 5 or a Steam Deck so I could play it well do you have an Xbox no you got that opportunity now too yeah, they <laughs> so. released on Xbox to the night of the awards uh it's basically I know you're familiar with D&D you know we yes. played once upon a time a one shot well kind of at Dale the of, Wizard at Dale the Wizard at ATB Con 2018. Yep. And uh that was a good time, but I know you actually have more experience with it. Uh Baldur's Gate 3 is probably the best representation of what it's like to be in a D&D campaign mm. that exists in video games with the added bonus of if you can play solo and you don't have to rely on scheduling with like four other humans, <laughs> a consistent, yeah. you know, that's, nice the, that is the, that's the kicker. Yeah. Um, th- there's real, no substitute for actually being yes. able to do that, like sit around, but let's face it. We're all adults and lots of times we just don't have time to do that anymore. Right. So, or we have friends it, it that is are all interesting, in different though. states. Like, the three of us so but it's interesting though that like stuff like zoom and this stuff has almost brought a resurgence to role-playing like because i there are websites like roll 20 where you can have the die rolls there where everyone can see it and it's there's no like oh not 20 again on my desk that no one can see (laughs) yeah (laughs) you know know, but like yeah like d20 and fantasy grounds and yeah yeah, like yeah that stuff is really nice a bunch of those those websites and like that that is kind of a, a cool opportunity that this technology has afforded people is like if the three of us really wanted to we could do a D campaign yes even though we're in different states mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah or we could all if we all had the same system we all just play baldur's gate 3 together and don't need a dm and you just you know, all right we each play a character and that way you mentioned Xbox. You're going to try and talk me into no, we're both buying PC. an Xbox so I can <laughs> play with you guys. Well, I, if I bought a Steam Deck, then could yes, I do that? Then you could yep. play with us. So, and that's, and again, so like looking at the whole, the game awards, like a lot of people that are big Spider-Man or Tears of the Kingdom fans are having a hard time coming to terms with Baldur's Gate 3 winning. 
And, you know, that's just people that are fans of one thing, not seeing that thing get the ultimate award of Game of the Year. But the reality is, like, this game is defining the genre of RPG. Like, going forward, you know, this in it's even more so because this was, a, technically speaking, an indie development studio. They're mm. not indie in size. I think they've got a few hundred to a thousand employees. But, like, they they are their own publisher. You know, they don't answer to a board um, that's owned by some, you know investment firm or something like they made the game they spent six years doing it it released and it was a one-of-a-kind experience as far as video games go so it's interesting because you know you who don't play much video games at all are still fully aware of what it is and i think that's a testament of why it deserved to win is because it didn't just make waves in the video game world, like right. it made waves in the D and D world, any sort of tabletop stuff, maybe even not like people just like, Oh yeah, I've heard of Baldur's Gate three. <laughs> of course, mm. because it's, it was that yeah. big. So yeah, I get, like, to me, it's like one of those things of like, like you said a couple of years ago, like breath of the wild, like that was one of those games. That I think mm -hmm. people were just like aware of because of what it was. Yes. And I feel like the same with like the, the first Spider-Man too is like felt like for a while there like everyone was talking about that that first Spider-Man game that came out on PlayStation. Yep. Because it was amazing. And like yeah, I, I think like obviously like not played any of these games. So I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I can't really like speak no, on fine. any authority, but like I, it, to me it like what you said, it feels like you can tip your cap to Tears of the Kingdom, you can tip your cap to Spider-Man 2 because they, they're built on those same systems. Like, yes. they're still doing great things. It's not like, we're not saying that game sucks. We're saying Breath of the Wild was something truly... It, yeah, it came like, out of left field. Truly, yeah, truly unique and amazing. And, like, we want to recognize it as the game of the year because it, it, it is. What's more prolific? The Cubs winning the world series for the first time in over a hundred years or the Patriots winning the fifth Super Bowl. Like it's great that the Patriots mm -hmm. won the fifth Super Bowl. They're building upon the same, you know, team mm -hmm. and franchise that they have, but the Cubs finally breaking that curse is something that's going to be talked about for the next hundred years when they don't right. win for the next hundred years. Yeah. Until so. they do it again. And <laughs> After we're long gone. So that's kind of what the situation here, you know, like if Spider-Man 2 wasn't nominated for Game of the Year, then that development studio would have basically fumbled it. Like you'd expect with how good Spider-Man 1 was that the second game they come out with is at that same level or higher. Mm -hmm. it's absolutely same thing with Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. Um, You know, Mario's Mario, but so Baldur's Gate 3 just comes out you know the previous game is like 20 years ago or something to that effect so it's like this is the launch of this franchise in the modern era so yep. I have one last thing to say on the game awards and uh, it's ultimately Shiloh and I were like what is the most anticipated game for us and that is Light No Fire by Hello oh, Games. I thought you were going to say Flute Man. <laughs> yeah, the Flute Man. You you need to at least watch Jordan the um the Game of the Year Orchestra can, uh, medley. There's a guy that plays like seven different types of flute, and it's the <laughs> greatest thing you will like. The most energy that you have ever seen from someone in an orchestra. <laughs> it's uh, it's phenomenal. It's, it's, it's special. Uh, but other than that, Light No Fire by Hello Games. This is the last thing we're going to talk about before we dive into the eBay game. Shiloh, do you have any thoughts on this? It looks great. I, I'm just wondering how it's going to ultimately play. Um, yeah. But from what I can tell, it looks like a more fantasy-driven No Man's Sky. Um, probably less planet-oriented and just a much, much bigger world. Yep. Um, which excites me because I'm not a, I mean, I 
flying around in a spaceship is that, that's all great and all, but I would just prefer to just, especially yeah. in the fantasy world, like you're not going to get a spaceship and go to another planet. It's just silly. But um, <laughs> yeah, this this yeah. looks really really good. Yeah, I, I know. Agree. I caught it. Everyone's like, "What is this?" And then. I quickly realized that yeah, I wasn't paying much attention to the No Man's St- Sky guy mm. talking about <laughs> No Man's yeah. Sky and completely just missed the fact that they're launching this. And I'm like, oh, wow, this is really, really yeah. interesting. This this could break up. The neat thing about this is it could, it, I think it offers up that uh, multiplayer RPG experience without technically probably being an MMO. So... Yeah. Um, it's more like playing an MMO with just your friends, I, I suppose. I don't know how it's all going to play out in the end, but I don't know. It really caught my eyes. So yeah, I don't know what we, your thoughts are, but we don't have much other information than what's the trailer. So this game, Jordan, is, uh, and this is in theory because the company that's developing this is also the company that developed No Man's Sky. Uh, which is famous for over-promising and under-delivering. And they've spent 10 years with that game getting it to where it's at, where it it should have been at launch based on the the promises and expectations. So who's to say if any of this actually happens? But it's a, the world, the in-game world is somewhat procedurally generated and it's like bigger than the earth. So your character walking around, like it's, larger than the earth which is Mm. wow Uh, but then it's like this fantasy survival crafting game with anthropomorphic animals um so may maybe a bit of everdell vibes i know that when Mm -hmm. i saw that and i immediately made that connection with everdell i was like all right i have to play this because everdell is my number two board game of all time currently and i don't think it'll be usurped by anything uh whiz war is still number one because i'm yeah i die hard on that i I hit for half a second my brain forgot had that blissful moment of forgot forgetting what your number one game was like oh what it (laughs) what other fun game would could possibly be number one oh yeah oh yeah but anyway this game light no fire you know has that element but just complete open world and it just looks insane so there's a lot more that was teased and previewed and um, announced at the Game Awards, but that one is certainly Shiloh and I's favorite. So, all like right, Grand Theft Auto Six. No, but that was that wasn't technically done at the uh, Game Awards. So, but it did come out, and I'm real excited for two years from now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you better <laughs> pick your right console because apparently it's not coming out on PC for some reason. I guess Rockstar is weird like that. But. Because Rockstar, yeah, Rockstar does that. Don't they do that with every? I think so. I think it takes like a few years before they put it on PC, which is like, you made this game on a PC. You guys, so you could. You guys have had console. a decade to do this. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, All right, I'm gonna grab my water real fast. So because okay. I gotta I gotta keep the vocal cords lubricated for this. That's right. For oh, this yeah. eBay game here. Well, while he he does that, I will say Shiloh that. One other game from the premieres and stuff that really caught my eye. Oh, he's back real quick. Was oh, um, the No Rest for the Wicked, which is like that pirate ARPG looking game. You might have missed this, but it was. Oh, and yeah, Jurassic probably, Park Survival. That yeah, one those are both, both two that I missed. I'll have to go back and watch. Yeah. You should but, definitely watch uh, Jurassic Park Survival. There's not much there. It just looks like a first person like all the sequences looked like they were cutscenes, if that makes sense. But the uh, No Rest for the Wicked is what looks to be kind of like a Diablo ARPG style, but set okay. in like a cursed pirate land. Um, and it's by the developers who did Ori in the Blind Forest and Ori in the Will of the Wisp. And those two games are phenomenal. So yeah, we'll see. Huh. All yeah. right, Jordan, you were back far quicker than I. <laughs> And I thought it was going to I take. said quick. I said fast. Well, sure, it, was in the ro- it was in the room with me, just on the other side of the room. That was like so. Olympic fast. So I, I was going to ask for my time, but, you know. <laughs> I didn't even have time to get my next thought out of my mouth before you were back. So, 
uh, listener, if you are watching on YouTube, Jordan is going to share his screen and he's got this whole PowerPoint. Uh, you will see it on the YouTube channel, right? the YouTube version of this episode. But for those who are only audio or audio only listeners, I, we will describe these items as well. So this is actually going to get out my, Oh, he's got a note. So we have, we have to keep score. Yes, we do. Oh, oh this yeah. is official this time. We have to keep score. Oh. And it's because it's only two people that makes it a little easier for me to keep score. Yep. We miss Swampy, though. Yes. Yeah. I haven't heard from him in a while, but Swampy is his you're birthday doing right. uh, fairly recently. Oh, well, happy. So birthday. happy birthday, Swampy, if you're listening. We'll assume he is. Happy birthday, Swampy. There you go. Yes. I like to make assumptions for people. <laughs> It's always a safe thing to do, right? Yeah, just safe, make an yeah. ass out of you and me and him and <laughs> everybody. <laughs> everybody ah, around. Just had a stroke. Oh. All right. Okay. This is All right. perfect. The this eBay game. The eBay game. So here we go. Are so what this is for anyone new is I I, I found these items today. This is December tenth, <laughs> well, twenty twenty three. Wow! I I did it. I intentionally. I didn't like procrastinate. Yeah, I, I was going to say because I wanted them to be accurate. And so, if you're watching this in like twenty twenty three, these are actual yeah. things that you can go find on eBay fact, right the heck now. This episode Goodbye. will release the day after it's recorded. So. This is going to be. You might even still be able to bid on yeah. these items <laughs> should if you you're really to. if you're really itching. So what it is is I use the buy it now price. So okay. not like a. So I sort by buy it now. So this is the buy it now price. So if there isn't, there are at least one item where it has a bid price and a buy it now price. We're going off the buy it now price. I will show uh, Conif and Shiloh <laughs> an item. Yep. And I have a dis part of the description, whatever the author of the post decided to put there, they get that information. <laughs> and we'll a lot of times and... it's not great. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go oh, back and forth. Fantastic. I don't know what you're between the, like, we'll have uh, Conif go first. So there are three rounds of the game. You'll okay. each get to go first twice in each round is how I have this set up. Okay. If that makes sense. The first mm -hmm. round... So Conniff will go yep. first, he'll guess. Shiloh will guess closest without going over gets a point in round one. Round two is worth two points. Round three is worth three points for correct answers. I do have a tiebreaker at the end. So if we get to the end, there is one extra item that's a tiebreaker. And even if it's not a tie, we can still look at it for LARFs. <laughs> All right. All right. So I like without it. further ado, the eBay game. <laughs> So here we have a palette, a whole palette of uh, of powdered milk in five gallon containers. Okay, which is twenty four so of these. There are twenty four of them, as you'll see here. That is four hundred eighty pounds oh of non fat powdered milk, which equates it'll produce three hundred eighty gallons. So my thinking was, it's Christmas time. When Santa comes, you want to have milk to put out for Santa. That's why we're looking at milk. <laughs> so if you want milk for Santa for the next millennia, <laughs> he's a one he's a we'll doomsday get, prepper. We'll get you there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is definitely a prepper with Santa in mind. So it's a lot of milk. So this doesn't go milk. bad though right like no it's, i think no. it's dry yeah you just it's add water Can't when dry you... stuff go bad eventually milk. i don't know uh that would be a question for the fine folks at bulk food international <laughs> llc you should email them you <laughs> definitely can this is a live item you can message them. what, what yeah. is the expiration date on your non-fat powdered milk i'm considering buying your palette of <laughs> <laughs> uh okay so so kind of first Oh, you will I don't even have a okay let me yeah let me look at this here so that's a full pallet 24 of those five gallon containers I mean 480 pounds it's gotta be let's go with like twelve hundred dollars that's 1200 bucks yeah all right 1200 bucks 
Oh, I, I forgot to mention, I will give you your round point plus five additional points if you get it dead on. Oh, yeah. So if you get oh, it wow. dead on the money, Certainly you get six this points this round, down. seven points the next round, eight points the third round. So you get five bonus points if you get it dead on. Okay, twelve hundred dollars is twelve hundred bucks is my guess. That's your buyout price. <laughs> well, mm. Not me, but that's what, that's what I'm assuming. Bulk food. They did say feel free to contact us with any questions, so they are me, they are willing and ready to hear the question see. on when does it expire. Let me see if they have a twenty four hour hotline. I'll ask them how much it is for the game. <laughs> no. <laughs> what do you think, Shiloh? I'm going to guess. $4,800. $4,800. See, right. now Shiloh works in the food industry, so... He, and he does have yeah. a little bit of a leg up. Yeah. But we don't generally uh, buy, buy pallets milk. of non-fat powdered milk, so... <laughs> sure? It's definitely not on an order guide anywhere I've ever worked for 25 so, years, so... I'm guessing this would be like uh, if you're making ice cream in extremely large quantities... I think they're just talking about prepping right here because that know. middle paragraph. Yeah. All right. Anyways, so let's take a look. Oh. Twenty seven ninety nine. Kind of weird. Well, is this so believe- this is Price is Right rules without going over, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Wow, three thousand effectively. I mean, twenty eight hundred. So, but if you buy, you get a deal if you buy three pallets. You get look at that price break for three pallets. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. Oh, okay. I was like, each. You also have to buy a warehouse. To- <laughs> you have to buy yeah, a warehouse or, or a, to store it all. Deep and dark so, bunker. <laughs> nat- naturally, we were leaving milk and cookies. So my next thing was to, I looked for cookies. And this came up. Whippets. <laughs> oh, that's paintball. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why when I typed in cookies i got this but it's a lot of <laughs> yeah uh, co2 co2 <laughs> yeah. cartridges or uh airsoft paintball. guns yeah, yeah paintball airsoft guns man so here you go wow is the crossman corporation has discounted their 88 gram air source line um <laughs> JT comes to the rescue dun, 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 <laughs> with these 90 gram tanks. So that's, uh-huh. I'm assuming, the size. I guess I don't really have a concept you're, of you're how getting big these are. 48 of them. 48. Okay, so. Partridges. 48. Yeah, so it's like a clip, I, right? Yeah. I mean, that's what well, you see with a paintball. It's like that big tank under the gun, but I, yeah. I'm assuming it's a decent size. So, I just don't have a concept of how big 90 grams is. But good news, yeah. you can breathe easy, free shipping and returns. <laughs> oh, <phew. laughs> 48 of these. Maybe Shiloh, don't you're breathe up first. Don't breathe the CO2 maybe, but yeah, that would not be a great yeah. way. All right, Shiloh, what clue. are you thinking? Hmm. The description definitely helps. <laughs> It definitely yeah. doesn't. <laughs> these are these are a uh, these are a high commodity item because they're discontinued. So, but all right, um, this company has come to the rescue. It would be interesting to so Swampy, our previous <laughs> host on GG Party Chat, he did do paintball somewhat professionally, maybe yeah. all the way professionally. Well, I don't remember. I so don't. I mean, know. maybe next year we can add in the phone a friend lifeline for this, and <laughs> yeah, that would be good. <laughs> we'll call. I'm... Nobody will answer if we call anybody. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go to voicemail. <laughs> has, I wonder if that ever happened on the prices, right? Yeah, I'm. Th- I'm sure they have the people that would be their call on standby, but that'd be kind of. Funny. They're probably like sitting in this <laughs> different part of the studio, oh, like, yeah, waiting yeah, yeah. for the <laughs> phone call. Hmm. What's your I'm guess, gonna guess. So? I gee, I don't have a clue. Uh, eight hundred and seventy-eight dollars. Eight seventy-eight. That just seems like a good number. I'm gonna go seven fifty. Seven fifty. Actual retail price. Ooh. Oh, we both four ninety-nine. That's cheaper 95. than I expected. Wow. Wow. 
If only I had I'm a Airsoft gun now. Can I for click this my... buy now button <laughs> yeah, yeah, on my screen? <laughs> Add to wish list. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even have a paintball gun, but I'm going to buy these. He's got more than 10 available. He does. I mean, you could. I mean, you could load up on five hundred of these CO two cards. Wow. All right. Well, that's disappointing. No one scored. Um, well. So the score is still one to nothing. Kind of. Nice. Then we got to real cookies. <laughs> All right. And uh, as far as I can tell, these are cookies and not uh, sewing bits and bobs, like was always the case at my grandma's house when I found a container yeah. that looked like this. Yeah. You open it up and it's always buttons and needles. Buttons and needles, exactly. So this is the Royal Dansk Danish butter cookie, or as the British people would call it, biscuits, mm -hmm. which is just incorrect. Wonder mm -hmm. if Tempest calls it that. So Jordan, we have Chris a friend from New Zealand, and his he his gamer tag is Tempest. I, I, we should. I would wonder if he calls them biscuits or cookies. Probably biscuits. Crispy buttery cookie classics. Mm -mm. Uh, Twelve ounce, ten. They're caffeine free. <laughs> Thank Does God. it say that somewhere? <laughs> yeah. Are, has there ever been a caffeine laden? A caffeinated cookie? <laughs> yeah. Food <laughs> specifications: caffeine free, preservative free, GMO free, fat free, gluten free. What's in these cookies? Now you both have had cookies like this, right? Mm -hmm. And listener, these are like your typical like they come in like a aluminum tin. You know, I mean, shortbread cookies. I I'm yeah. convinced that Do you our like them? our grandmothers, like a generation of women, was convinced that these cookie tins were for sto storing like buttons and sewing yeah, needles. Like, yeah, an entire generation of women. I think everyone had one of these things of these tins that fooled their grandchildren into thinking, "Oh, cookies? Nope, needles and buttons." <laughs> 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 or or nowadays other snacks from the holiday get put in these tins i don't the cookies just vanish like because okay. i'm not eating them i don't know anybody that is like they just disappear so i guess kind of what would you guess well it says 12 ounce but then the packaging is 1.5 pounds so is that the total weight of like i think yeah, the the aluminum tin can you go back to the description? I need to. I need some alternate information. They are American, even though they are Danish butter cookies. <laughs> so, but they are made to melt in your mouth. Why do they, they taste are. so good? Because they, they don't compromise on quality. Long-standing, oh, man. I mean, it's just a cookie, right? A cookie. Long-standing cookie craftsmanship. Yeah, but they melt in your mouth. <laughs> They're also caffeine-free. <laughs> <laughs> all right i'm you going with that. i'm going with 35 dollars as opposed to those caffeinated danish cookies you can get from the mm -hmm. other guys there's yeah. a, an it's allergy so alert for celery what is celery doing anywhere near these things <laughs> i'm kind of they suspicious. make uh i don't know uh Ants on a sure. log and, <laughs> and the next, <laughs> the the next, next building over. Charcuterie boards are in the oh. same factory. Okay. Uh, 35 bucks is $35. my is my guess. It's low balling. These are, these oh, are you going to go over again, Shiloh, and I'm just going to rack up the points? Yeah. You know, these are, these are, not only are they caffeine free, <laughs> not only is that a lovely shade of blue on that, uh, I'm guessing tin. aluminum tin, <laughs> aluminum and tin, tin, I don't know, whatever that canister is. I'm going to say, you said 35? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say 45. I'm going to give you a little bit of, little bit of wiggle room. Leeway. You're going you're gonna to give him some wiggle room? You didn't go I mean, 36? And I, didn't go, I didn't go. I didn't, yeah. I mean, that's, that's the He's not way playing to, play to get on to the next round. <laughs> like like uh, they are in prices, right? Actual list price. Oh, my. <laughs> wow. A hundred dollars. going to be. Uh, it's the last uh, one. These are heirloom cookies. Is that why the price? <laughs> so if They've you, sold 13. <laughs> if you're listening to this episode on release day, this is probably gone. So you can't bid. $100 yeah, these are. I've already bought them. Hundred. Yeah, they're 
They're already on the way to and Tyler's house. Yep. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> He's going to toss the cookies. I want, I want the, uh, bombs the cookie the that looks like a pretzel. Right. The, the pretzel cookie. That is a mm-hmm. fun shape. I'm not going to lie. It is a fun shape. All right. Moving on. Hey, the holiday Virginia. times. Oh, wow. You know, you've got uh, the bowl games happening. So we've got a 2002 authentic West Virginia Continental Tire Bowl Game Ring. Hmm. Okay. Never heard of the Own West a piece Virginia of West Virginia Mountaineers history. An authentic 2002 uh, the Tire Bowl. Uh, help celebrate the bowl. team's victory. The old Tire Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> I think Pac-Man Jones is selling this. <laughs> wasn't he a... Isn't he of West Virginia? I don't know. I don't know who Graduate. was on this tire, the Tire Bowl champion team. Yeah, I don't know might anything have been him. about college, whatever this is. I'm assuming football. football. Yeah. The, the foosball. The foosball. What do you think, Shiloh? Well, whoever Shell Dog 88 is, they've got a 100% positive rating. With so four sold, though. <laughs> So off to a great start for them. You, you know, it's a it's a name you can trust when you're buying. Yeah, pond I, jewelry. I, I want to know if this ring actually comes with the severed finger that it came off of. Uh, um, if that would that be worth more? Uh, or less? Should please, I, e- please can note, I email Shell Dog? Please note this is gold in color, but not actual gold. Mm. But the ring is a must-have for any die-hard fan. Of the of West the, Virginia Mountaineers. Of the West Virginia Mountaineers. Which, what, there's like a hundred of you, maybe? So, <laughs> I don't alienating the, the listeners from West Virginia, I see. Do people from bold West move. Virginia have computers to listen to this podcast? Bold, bold move. I mean, Gow. you're kind of throwing rocks from a glass house there, Missouri. I, I yeah, You're not lying. <laughs> What do you think, Shiloh? You're first, I think, on this? Yeah. Oh, I am. Um, all right. So they admitted to the not gold thing, which is probably wise. They did fess up. To I'm that. guessing that the, if that's, that's not real gold, those are that, not real gold. Those are oh, cubic zirconia yeah. To, yeah. The, to the gills. And in that, that thing. is definitely not uh, sapphire. Oh, or, no. <laughs> um. Clear blue plastic, <laughs> but they, I, they're, they're still going to try to get some money for this. Oh yeah, because um, it's awesome. with a name like Shell Dog eighty eight. <laughs> I'm going to say that they're trying to get a, they're going to get they're going to try to get four hundred twenty dollars out of this. Four hundred twenty dollars for just what Shell Dog's looking for. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say four twenty. This that's is Shell Dog's magic number. I want a piece of West Virginia history. Uh, celebrates the team's victory. It's perfect for any football fan. Oh, they won't. Any okay. football fan. The Tire Bowl. Any. I've never heard of the Tire any. Bowl game. I'm going to say... I don't think the Tire Bowl's in existence anymore. I'm going to say no. $250. $250. So you're going under. Yeah. You think Shiloh overshot it. There's... Yeah. All right. <laughs> Just yeah. Listeners. Viewers, I should say. The viewers on YouTube. Yeah. And, yes. Actual price is... Twelve hundred dollars, or I know the price of excellence. You can pay fifty bucks a <laughs> month for twenty-four <laughs> months with PayPal credit. You were yeah. thirty. You were a whole math's really hard right now, but you were like thirty-three percent of this price. So yeah, I guess you were less than that. I you were twenty like percent. <laughs> you know, maybe I had my own interest in this particular item clouding my judgment. <laughs> yeah, I, I think you... Bonif is a real Pitt Panthers fan, <laughs> the, the noted rival of the West Virginia Mountaineers. So he thought anything with a West yeah, Virginia logo is, on it is this is trash. trash. It's trash. Yeah. It's the tire bowl. Nobody cares about the tire bowl. <laughs> wow. Okay. So rest in peace to the tire bowl Shiloh's soon. two points mm. now two to one all right i believe that takes Come us back. into round two okay noted by the different background oh wow so this is for when you this want is something nintendo you 64. can buy at walgreens i think you say hey mom can we get nintendo 64 and mom's like we've got nintendo no you're getting this, <laughs> this, this i appreciate the meme what Jordan. is this mom <laughs> shut up play it 
Uh, Power player. Wow. It comes with three <laughs> things here. You get the gun. You get the... I think that's a Sega Genesis pad. Hey, and, look at it. It comes with the uh, Plagon Jin and... Uh, <laughs> It does. Darth Maul, Darth Maul Obi Wan. What are they doing here? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why you've got Duel of the Fates on the box, but you do. What's the description say for this? <laughs> Not much. <laughs> it's unbranded. Well, that's clearly oh, system the case because it says Power Player right there. <laughs> oh, uh, my favorite is the last line of the description. Weird and rare. <laughs> <laughs> it sells itself. You know? Yeah, really. N sixty four style and a Genesis style game. See, but what is it? It's claims to have seventy six thousand games. It comes with a real gun. No, and two I think pads. that's the brand, like the model of it. It's. It <sighs> says on the thing. Look at like uh, between the two controllers, seventy six thousand in one. Wow. Hmm. I don't Weird. know what. And rare. Well, and rare. Like 76,000 games, 75,800 of them are Tetris clones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can play with a gun. And there's one star licensed Star Wars game, which is why they were able to put it on the box. <laughs> uh, um, who goes first? Is it? In Duck Hunt. So, uh, Shiloh went first last time. Well, I... Yes, I went first. So am I always going first when the round starts over? Yeah, sure. Okay. We'll just keep it. We'll just keep volleying keep back the and volley. forth. Uh, man, I mean, this, I just thanks for the information. Recycled generations. At least you are one hundred percent positive with twenty two hundred several uh, yeah sales, but or reviews or whatever. I, I just I. Don't, the the i didn't even notice the duel of the face happening on the box until like until you guys <laughs> until it like i was i was just wrapped up with the crappy controllers yeah. the, <laughs> um, i mean i gotta think like this is like what like 200 bucks like someone would try to sell this for 200 bucks i have never heard of this either and the fact that it's got all those games in one leads me to believe that it's obviously a knockoff product. So I'm going to say $200. $200. Yeah. Shiloh? I mean, what's the math on 200 bucks for 76,000 games? That's, I mean, that's... But that's the thing. You can buy, like, these little Game money. Boy... Like, these Game Boy things now that are... They have, like, that many games. But it's all, like, a Raspberry Pi, you know? And it's only like 120 bucks or something, 150. I like the seller notes. It looks new inside. I can't see all of it, but except that it has been taken out and then put back in. It looks new inside, except it's not. <laughs> it's that actually basically what I'm just saying. <laughs> it's yeah. new, but it's not. <laughs> I. What, what do you think, Shiloh? You have any confident I'm just answer for this one? Guess. I don't know. Uh, Weird and rare. $310. $310. All right. Power player. Actual price. $150. Oh, no. Over. See, and I said $120 to 150 for like the modern version of this. Man, I should have went with my low ball offer. I, I think the eBayers are becoming more... Because you remember some of the... In the years past, listeners, oh, we yeah. had some real... <laughs> Like that painting. Real winners. Or that, better yet, the <laughs> child drawing. <laughs> yes, that was fabulous. With gold ink for $99,000. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I wonder how many they sold of that. Yeah. Goose I egg. still, uh, my favorite is on those, on these things, all of these things. So for the next month, I will get emails and notifications <laughs> oh, because oh, I've Lord. pulled yeah. these things up oh. and eBay <laughs> notifies them that I've looked yeah. at it. This and is so on then, sale now. So <laughs> then, yeah, they'll send me like that person with the, with the, like the $900,000 painting was like, Hey, I'll give you $200,000 <laughs> off. And I was like, so tempting. Uh, I, I also have a child that I'll give you. If you <laughs> give me that money, I will uh, put that child in a box and send it to you. That um, sounds like something that's that right. would do. So, moving on. 
Ooh. Nice. Ooh. Thematic, I felt, it's for Balder. Oh, the Baldur's Gate 3 talk that I knew we would have on this episode. <laughs> Very, they're ornaments. <laughs> Wise of you. <laughs> yeah. Christmas ornaments. We're keeping with the holiday theme here. So Dungeons and Dragons uh, three inch resin ornaments. A two pack. You got the Beholder and the D&D logo. Hmm. Interesting. Add some flair to your holiday decor with this Dungeons and Dragons logo and Beholder three inch resin ornament two pack set. This is very. Um, the set is recommended for ages five and up. I mean, it's yeah, an ornament. Keep this right? away like, from your four year olds because, you know, they can't yeah. handle it. Why don't you just put this on the tree? I can't tell if this is just like a disc thing with like the resin figure or symbol on one side or if it's like a ball that the colors it are just looks very like just flat. a disc yeah they look like just disc or ornaments. ornament well Charlotte, you have to guess first so this is the last one available oh man i'm gonna guess Forty-five dollars. Okay. I feel like that's really good. I'm gonna go twenty dollars. Twenty dollars. Oh boy. Right. Yeah, but this is eBay. Yeah, I'm. And they. Yeah, twenty dollars. I'm. All right. Actual price. Nineteen. Oh, you gotta be kidding me! <laughs> Dang it! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I should get ouch. like half a point for basically getting it. Tax uh, is gonna put it past twenty bucks, nineteen ninety nine. Wow, but the Price is Right rules would say that's a no go for both of us. It's true. Yeah. I don't know. I don't. Do I want to be the benevolent game master? I don't know. Are you a it benevolent would be, DM? It'd be were... seven <laughs> points. Because it's two for the right answer plus the five bonus for the dead on. Two for the right answer? Uh, we're in round two. Oh. Hence the change in background color. We're in round two, so two points for right answers. Oh. Well, which you both have whiffed at twice now. We'll move on. No whiffers. points awarded. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be rule with an iron fist. That's fair. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh. While I search for Dungeons and Dragons, this came up. <laughs> A muscle suit for <laughs> cosplay, uh, Batman, Dragon Ball, Rambo. I think I don't. No is idea. Rambo a thing, or did they mean to say Rambo? <laughs> that's I, increasingly that's sounding like person. what it's supposed to be. <laughs> I just want to know where to get that helm. Yeah. Does the does the flaming pumpkin um, image come with it? I think so. I think that was added in after. That's they've just, got that's five. just the actor. Yeah, they don't want to show you the face. And it's fifty dollar economy shipping for from outside of the U.S. So it's coming from outside of the United States. Fifty dollars to ship this bad boy. Shipping worldwide <laughs> in ten to forty five days. This is fascinating. So you, and it's just a size jerk. <laughs> Muscle suit, upper body for cosplay Halloween. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> standard size uh, I have to go first <laughs> sizes for body from minimum to maximum in inches if your body measurements are larger than these measurements then the size will not fit you <laughs> I thought the whole point was you, this, you put this on it makes you bigger right <laughs> Right. Well, if you're bigger than if you're already bigger why do you need this <laughs> yeah you don't need this you're already this jack but so see, you want to be is... batman goku or rambo i mean it doesn't look rambo. terrible or like rambo. You... <laughs> if you want to be knock off rambo like you've seen <laughs> some of these that look just horrible but this one doesn't look like god awful i'm gonna go a hundred no we're gonna go 99.99 baby i'm not getting caught on this again 99 dollars 99 cents yeah Shiloh. Mm. I'm regretting. You know what to my, do. I'm regretting my choice. You know what to do. 
slam the door in his, right in his face. <laughs> I'll give him a little bit of wiggle room. $110. All right. I think Shiloh's got it. I think this is probably like $235 or something. Probably. Right. I don't know what this is made out of. For all those kids out there hoping to be Rimbo for Halloween. Rimbo. Seven hundred dollars wow. and two points. Maybe it does come with the flaming pumpkin head. Yeah, better. <laughs> that would make more sense for seven hundred dollars. Is that who Rembo is? As a muscular, shirtless <laughs> pumpkin, pumpkin flaming pumpkin it's head, like made reverse of of uh, what is that? Sleepy Hollow. The yeah, Atlas horseman. That, that's where his head went. Is yeah, into his, this guy. His head went and got jacked. <laughs> All right. People are checking this out according to that picture. There were people looking True. at it. Ooh, a pinball. So this oh. is a Shack, Shack Attack, Attack pinball machine. I went and found this because the company I work for, we had a Christmas party or ho holiday party at okay. this place called Beercade in Omaha. Okay. I mean, it's an arcade that sells beer, hence nice. the name. And so they rented out this bottom room where they have all these pinball machines and other, like, older arcade games you can play for free. And so I got to play the Shack Attack pinball machine. It's pretty fun because it's got like a basketball hoop that like moves back and forth. So as you, if you hit the pinballs, it'll, it'll go up like this little ramp. And you, if you make one in the bucket, the whole thing like lights up and goes crazy. And <laughs> <laughs> it's actually pretty fun. I mean, I feel like this could be worth some money because it's Shaq. Yeah. yeah. Fam themed after Shaquille O'Neal, famous basketball player. <laughs> oh, that's who he is. <laughs> uh, oh, oh that not Shaq. the Papa Murphy guy. <laughs> that Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> One in the same. Oh it's in Pennsylvania. They, they, almost, they almost got me here with the modest moderately modestly priced at. Yeah. I was like, ha oh. Not so fast, my friends. <laughs> I was looking for one of these in which he didn't catch it, but so far you done well it will enhance any man cave or shack fan so as if i was a shack fan and i get this i will be enhanced <laughs> you will be enhanced <laughs> this has said only about three thousand units were manufactured making this relatively rare uh i do know so we have a board game store in uh well near a town where i am called meta games and they have a ton of pinball machines and once upon a time I, I take my kids there because they love playing pinball mm -hmm. and probably to the uh annoyance of all the magic the gathering people that are there playing <laughs> slinging their cards and they'll just hear all these dumb pinball machines going up <laughs> but i looked it up because i was like you know pinball machine that's kind of something that like would just be fun to have like you're you might cool. only play it for like 30 minutes or something you know, but like kids would like it, you know, that type of stuff. So I looked up like what one of the like the Mandalorian one that they have was. And that one was like seven thousand dollars to like eight thousand or something. So I was like, Dang. so is it Shiloh that goes first on this one? I think so. So with that information, Shiloh, maybe I'm trying to lead you astray. I'm not. He is, he's trying to, he's anchoring you to a higher number, I think, is what he's yeah, trying to do. Yeah, probably. This would be worth more this if it one, was Michael Jordan, so. This one looks, I don't know. They have a link to a YouTube video of it working, I think. They can, we can deliver very reasonably up to 300 miles of zip code. Is that a real? Yeah. It's in Pennsylvania. It's in Pennsylvania. I just like, we can deliver very reasonably. <laughs> We can deliver you very reasonably. <laughs> All right. Baden, um, Pennsylvania. Baden, Pennsylvania. Hmm. Does anyone know where Baden is? There nope. you go. Somewhere in that I'm, state. I'm going to have a weevil. Yeah. Maybe pick this up and I can come pick it up in my <laughs> we'll bring it to our 2015 retreat. Chevy Sonic. I'll just saw it in half and <laughs> shove it in the back. Um, <laughs> it's what Shaq would want. <laughs> it, it, it's what I would want. What More pepperoni. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna guess. God, this this is a nice piece though. <laughs> Forty pinball kind of Forty seven hundred. That does Four sound like a mod modestly priced thing. Baden appears to be northeast of Pittsburgh. 
There you go. Weevil, I need you to pick up my shack. <laughs> Basically, machine. between Pittsburgh and Youngstown, Ohio. Perfect. I'm going to pull a Shiloh and I'm going to say five, five grand. Five grand. I bet, I bet it's closer to yours. I bet it's like 8,000. Thirty-five, Whoa. ninety-five. Dang, That's we better both than expected. Again. Yeah, maybe I will buy this. <laughs> so <laughs> next next year, I think we will record this episode live at Shiloh's place after we've all after finished we've a <laughs> after we've all finished a a round of the Shack pinball Shack machine. attack. Yeah. Because it is, a it is a, a pretty fun pinball machine. It's got a good multi-ball that you can hit mm. with decent ease. That's the attack part mm -hmm. of the shack attack. Is, which is fun. Multi-ball is fun, I think. Yeah. I agree Anyways, with that. that's the shack attack pinball cool. machine. Interesting. Is oh. this the round three? Yes. The pink, wow. the pink gave it away. The pink gave it away. So these are worth three yeah, points. Well, they put this on switch. So we the current really? standings are Shiloh has four points and Clanoff has one. Yeah, I'm not doing because we've gone over. We have we gone. we've gone over a lot. We're we're conditioned from the previous times we played this yes. game. Yes, I know with that, that dumb nine hundred like this dogs. This is the mental game I'm playing with you guys. Is <laughs> I've I've got the shell shock. <laughs> is this real? I didn't As know it was out on the Peggy Switch. Peggy 16, uh, which I'm assuming is what that logo is at the bottom. Um. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you get. That's all they get. Item man. description from the seller. Brand new sealed mint condition. Thanks. So Thank what you. these are, list, listeners to the podcast, SMB. this is a Switch. It's a Baldur's Gate and Baldur's Gate 2 combo. Mm. Enhanced edition. Enhanced edition. I don't know what rating system that is. That's not the United States rating system down there in the corner. The whatever the sixteen is. Well, there's a company called Peggy Sixteen, or it's like a production, and that's what their logo looks like. But that's but, typically the place where they put like the E for everyone and you're for mature. Right. And since it's a Switch game, that wouldn't surprise me. <sighs> Maybe Australia. He's got two copies. Uh, I of go this, first whatever it is, this. Baldur's Gate and Baldur's Gate Two. Conf is first. Three points. This will tie the game if you can get this on Conf. Oh. I don't, but I don't know how expensive these games are. Like they're not that worth that much, are they? I would have to guess like sixty bucks is what I would think. Sixty doll hairs. They just brand new, sealed in mint condition. Shiloh. What do you think? Go with your heart on this one. As you have all the others, I suppose. <laughs> oh, I always I always uh guess with my heart. Seventy nine dollars. Seventy nine dollars. I hope actual I price. Oh. Oh. Uh, way too much. Fifty dollars. <laughs> and that's in US USD, so that USD. Look, or best Gal Shimbu three. Shiloh's you. crushing me right now. I am just really bad at guessing price, but uh, three hundred and fifty dollars for a Switch so, version of Baldur's Gate one and they two. They must, yeah, they must not have made a lot. They you can't. I, they probably can only you? made two when they ripped them onto these. Yeah, and they have the only two. <laughs> Can you? Because he you made can it in his base stuff from on a switch, right? Like they have digital yeah, downloads and stuff, do. right? I don't know if it's in the switch store. If Baldur's Gate one and two are in the switch store, yeah, but people like their clamshell collectors pieces. They so. do, really. That's probably yeah. Mm -hmm. They switch do. People. All right, I so mean, that, I, make, that takes the score to Shiloh seven on F one. I'm getting smoked. You're getting this is the torched. score of the. No, actually, the score of the. My Vikings beat the Raiders three to zero. Hey, if you, it, <laughs> if, if, game. that is not the Minnesota Wild versus the uh, Las Vegas, Las Vegas right. Golden Knights. This is this is the Minnesota Vikings versus the Las these Vegas are NFL Raiders. Teams. <laughs> yeah, these are NFL teams. The score was three to nothing. <laughs> Great the defense, final. right? That's yeah. what we'll chalk it up. To. Yeah, that's what we'll chalk it up to. Definitely not bad offense. 
Yeah, definitely. All right. <laughs> here we go. This is what I was oh, waiting wow. for. The Groucho so, marks. yeah, here we go. Uh, nice. You know, I thought, you know, holiday season, who want, who doesn't want a nice mug drink their warm beverage out of, be it hot cocoa, coffee, a hot toddy. <laughs> the funny so face art stoneware pottery mug. Yeah. Wow. So here's some nightmare fuel for you. To drink your coffee out of <laughs> i mean that is the type of coffee mug i would take to work and drink coffee out of in the office just to be that guy St- street urchin crescent city florida is that a real place <laughs> <laughs> or are they describing uh, themselves <laughs> i don't know there is a person called street urchin in crescent city florida i think it's also his name is Florida Man, I believe. <laughs> There's a lot well, it's of his, It's his other name, his other moniker. It, maybe that is the street urchin. That's the mug. Well, we, or maybe that's the brand. Okay. I don't know. Gaze Bauman FL? I thought it was Fidel Castro on a mug. <laughs> Might be. Eight, 1982, vintage, rare, uh-huh. novelty, hand-thrown, hand-painted, art, funny face, fun mug. Yep, look, drink out of Castro's... Uh, Coffee. It's funny. <laughs> Cold War. Well, what do you think, Shiloh? Good times. Uh, just... Good times. <laughs> it looks like Stalin. It does yeah, look like Stalin. It, it just looks like a like a dictator. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Drink out of dictator your dictator face. mug. <laughs> your favorite dictator. Um, 30... No, that's low. Uh... Or is it? You can, you can taste millions being exploited. Yeah, out of this <laughs> coffee mug. One does not simply drink out of funny face art stoneware pottery mug. $62. <laughs> I'm going $62. I'm, I'm going for 100 bucks because this is $100. vintage from 1982. Or 62 and bucks funny. and 100 Actual price. Buy it now. You've Seventy-nine. <laughs> Shiloh, you've got to play the game. When he I says sixty-two, the game. you say sixty-three. You got to like. Uh, maybe I'm gonna have to get cutthroat on him. Yeah, I think you're gonna. I only have one more option to do so. Ten to one. Yeah, this is a shot. Arrives by Christmas if you want it. Let me buy it for you. Seventy-nine. Buy it for you with my points that I'm winning. I mean, the bid ends in 17 hours. You can probably get it for the 60. It ends at Monday. Zero Monday bids. Zero Monday. It'll zero end bids. It's a few hours after this episode goes live. So, listen. anyone listen, if you are listening early, you can you can pick up yourself the funny face art somewhere. Yeah. You do not have Dictator much time. Part. Yeah. All right. Wow. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> that looks like my freezer. Two snowballs. From the biggest <laughs> snowfall in New York City history. Snow from January 23rd, 2016. This My favorite hilarious. is the condition. Yeah. Used. Does it come with the haagen chocolate uh, ice cream? <laughs> here's here's you know their what? comment. <laughs> it does. Oh, the haagen is included. Because that's how they keep it uh, frozen. Oh, I need to read this for our listeners. <laughs> Saudi prince, good. Brazilian tycoon, Japanese businessman, or the man-woman who has everything? Well, you don't. Now you can with these beautiful, <laughs> wonderful, fabulous, frozen, one-of-a-kind snowballs. Add these to your collection Ooh. today. Who wouldn't want these beauties? <laughs> haagen included. included. Uh, what is this? The start date doesn't reflect when they were made. The original account this was set up through was closed. <laughs> so there's a whole caveat to this account. Watch the video from YouTube. This should get you in the mood for these beautiful snowballs. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know I needed to be in a mood for snowballs. Other, wow. Other feet pics? Shipping is hand delivery. The, uh, hand delivery? <laughs> no. Oh. oh. Shipping. Oh, wow. Please inquire for inquire details. for details. Uh-oh. Interesting. I mean, they're not of the highest quality <laughs> spheres. So yeah, that's you want these annoying. snowballs? Yeah, that's me. Yeah, I, yeah. You, did <laughs> you be- buy these things? Yeah, here you go. <laughs> the best part is under <laughs> yeah, the. Yeah. I forgot your Hagen Dazs. Hold on, let me get back to the apartment and get them out. 
The best part is under condition used, it says, it fell from the sky in new condition. <laughs> but once I handmade them and put them in the freezer, I guess. Thanks. Yeah, obviously new condition is where it fell from. <laughs> yeah. Or one, one could say that it was used the second it was turned into a snowball. So it was never a new snowball. It was always in used condition. Maybe it's magic. Is this so you said this is today you got this today i found which, this today which means it is still the biggest snowfall in new york city history five it people have added it to their watch list too it also means that you're going to get emails about this uh, fine I product i truly am i hope so yeah i wanted to follow up so why do i have to go first on this uh this is like a, sh a complete shot in the dark i have yeah, no this is like idea. buying magic Really, if you think about it, <laughs> what, what price do you pay on? It's like uh, buying magic beans. <laughs> Some yeah. farmer told you. How much do you pay for magic missile? Like, uh, I don't know. Uh, two. I mean, like fifty bucks. It does come with Haagen Dazs ice cream. <laughs> it doesn't say the condition. I don't know if that's a half pint or what's going on in that. That's that. That's that looks pint. like a mini fridge. So, or maybe just the top rung of a half of a a freezer. So I'm gonna say forty nine ninety nine. I don't need to see this. I don't. Let's see what Shiloh says. There's nothing else in this description that would help. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, there's a YouTube video about this. So, that's uh, the YouTube video alone. Uh, it's a. Uh, that it kind of it's a lot of merit um and what are you gonna it kind do, of Sean? shows a lot of uh, credentials i don't even need to see the youtube video <laughs> i just know that the youtube video was made and therefore the magic that i see in this uh shotgun freezer <laughs> uh i'm gonna say Seventeen hundred dollars. <laughs> that is the minimum amount oh, that really, you can put I'm gonna on get magic. Some points, hopefully, <laughs> it's gonna we're be. Gonna see if, we're gonna see if Connor can get some points. Oh here. no, he won't. Oh my! God. <laughs> you see, you can't put a price tag on magic, Connor. Uh, <laughs> For those of you listening on the podcast, twenty five thousand dollars is what this person says. This I is do. what this person owes uh, the mafia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You so, notice how they don't a have a 100% rating. Please buy rating. these snowballs for this poor individual or their kneecaps are going to be inverted uh, in the next few days. So well, he's going to get a pair have... of cement shoes for Christmas. Yeah, they're not going to have a good Christmas at all. <laughs> and they're also going to be out their Hagen dazs ice wow. cream. I was way off. Well, we, uh, we were both way I? off. <laughs> oh, hey. some candy for Christmas. So you've got a rare Sour Patch Kids multicolor <laughs> raspberry orange mistake. Wow, nice it eye. Is, is, uh, <laughs> Glad you didn't. Your kid didn't just put that in. Yeah, his mouth. I don't eat that. <laughs> it's a mistake. Uh, just like you, if you eat that. That's <laughs> <laughs> Billy, that's rare. Put Christmas. that down. D do I get the rest of the Sour Patch Kids with this? <laughs> Clearly, no, because they're still in the picture. He swatted that thing out of his kid's hand and yeah. got the phone out. I know, but I want the ones in the bag still. <laughs> I don't want just this one. Yeah, I well, like Sour Patch Kids. Let's see what uh, Ohm Good, who's got 17 positive readings. What, what is all he... from his ch children? Is there a description <laughs> on this one? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Oh, okay. Wow. Um, if you guys have any questions, please let me know. Thank you. It's pretty straightforward. No questions here. I found this super rare Sour Patch Kids. They are very hard to find. <laughs> if someone is serious about buying it, I will be donating some portions of the money to multiple causes of need. So that's a mm -hmm. positive. Multiple ca causes yeah. of need, meaning his rent, yeah. his car yeah. payment. The condition is new in quotations. Certainly newer than the snowballs. His trip to Cancun, all of these needy <laughs> causes. How do I know he didn't lick donated. it first? You don't. You don't. That's the fun. Just to see if the like the flavor was duo, duo. You know. Mm -hmm. hmm. Shiloh, I do believe you go first. Condition is new, despite the fact of the package being clearly open <laughs> in the photos. 
Well, this does not quali- qualify or quantify as magic um, in my book. Therefore, I'm going to go with a low buyout price of eleven dollars and forty nine cents. Eleven forty nine, and I'm going for twelve bucks because I'm going to be that guy. Get some points. You should have gone eleven fifty. No, there's no way it's between eleven forty nine and twelve bucks. And if it is, I will. All right. I don't even know. 20 okay. grand. I got some points. There you go. Good yeah, job. This Connor. guy's also got to pay somebody back. <laughs> this guy and the snowball guy are friends, I think. They could be. I appreciate the snowball. Because this guy's in. Uh, much better than this guy. This guy's also in New York. What are they drinking? Like, what's in the water out there that this is, like, kind of the stuff that Rat they're Rat feces. To... <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> p- people want this. 16 people are watching this item, particularly. How many people were watching the snowballs? Was it, was Not, it five? Let's, I don't let's think five, five have added it to their watch list. <laughs> $20,000. Yep. Wow. That's I can't remember. Is this the last one? Oh, yeah. Here's the bonus question. We'll do it. We'll make this one worth a thousand points. <laughs> wow. Okay. Billy Jeffrey Chippendale's official lifestyle cardboard cutouts collection of three. Wow. <laughs> Life size cardboard cutout. Hmm. Uh, I've got it. I've got a set of these in my <laughs> closet. There's more than these are or... in Great Britain. As you can see, the shipping is 3406. Great Britain pounds, approximately forty two seventy two USD. Is the mm-hmm. price in pounds? It as well. is in pounds, but it gives an estimate conversion. Okay. Is this there person has ten thousand nine hundred seventy seven ratings, a hundred percent positive. That's insane. So this That's is a, a serious lot seller. Of these. If you mm-hmm. look I think there's something going on over here in the small picture. I didn't zoom in on. I think that's Darth Vader going on in there. It yeah. does appear to be Darth Vader. Very small. So, oh my! Uh, what, <laughs> uh, what do we want to sh- call out in here and read? Please note that all of our cutouts are 2D. <laughs> well, okay, I'm buying them then. <laughs> they- <laughs> <laughs> they are manufactured with either a single or double machine cut fold for the purposes of transportation and storage. Please be aware that these are large items and they can only be transported by courier. So you can't transport them to the U.S. to Tennessee where Shiloh lives. Is that what you're saying? Unless you got a courier who will bring them from the U.K. to Tennessee. Or Missouri. Or I have to pick them up in Baltimore or something It like does that. say to the U.S. and Canada... Delivery is typically one to two business days. That seems really quick. Do you think they just like launch it out of a giant rubber band gun across the ocean? <laughs> Here you go. This guy bought all the the uh, Concord jets. Some they that company got shut down and <laughs> they're in his private fleet. Uh, hmm. Wow, this is wild. Uh, well, Shiloh. Oh, well, I go, yeah, I we'll make first. Shiloh go first since he's got the he's currently winning. Oh, he is winning. What do you think, Shiloh? 13 to 4. So the final score will be either 1,004 to 13 or 1,013 to 4. This is for all the marbles, Shiloh. What do you think? Uh, I'm thinking... Just a reminder for what you're... There's three of them. Three cardboard cutouts. (sighs) I thought we were looking at a village people situation when I first looked at this. (laughs) I was like, I don't remember the doctor being that ripped. <laughs> no. Um. I mean, you could ju- dress up like the fourth village person and do the YMCA with these guys. <laughs> <laughs> Photoshop your Which face. Which I might. Um, <laughs> I'm going to guess. Man. $750. Seven hundred fifty dollars. No uh, it's three. I'm going a hundred and forty nine ninety nine. Actual retail price. Yeah. Uh, wait. One thirty four twenty one. No, it's off by the US amount too. So, oh. One hundred and six ninety nine GBP. 
Wow. So no points are awarded. What a deal. What a deal. I know, right? You get three, Billy. Three. Add to wish list. Kurt <laughs> yep. Add to wish list. Who is Billy Jeffrey? Who is Billy Jeffrey? many people are watching? I don't know. I don't want to know, really. <laughs> it's this guy. Well, clearly. Whoever he is. <laughs> he's, he's got a lot of, uh, looks like, occupations. Well, Shiloh is the <laughs> 2023 eBay game champion. Mm. Nice. Shiloh. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to thank my uh, the listeners, my mom and dad, the Academy. Uh, <laughs> Unlike the Game Awards, I'll give you plenty of time if you want to continue your acceptance speech. Oh, so that, that was the other thing is they gave all the celebrities at the Game Awards like 10 minutes and then people win awards and the music's playing after like 20 seconds. It's like, get off the stage. Get out of here. It's just terrible. You know, it's like these people, their life. It is work. a very weird, and maybe it's because all game, or not, not game awards, all award ceremonies are very weird and they're. That's true. But we've become so used to typical award that the game awards just seems like this weird just this weird conglomerate of like the Grammys or the Oscars thrown together with like a, an actual like uh, E3 game event mm -hmm. kind of thing where it's just trailer after trailer after trailer. It's a weird. You need thing. to find some weird balance with that. It just seems a little discombobulated, all, all kind of all over the place. I'm like, wait, hold on, hold on. What is the trailer? Okay. And then they're just like, oh, and these people won awards, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> They won. Blah, 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 blah. You win. <laughs> it's like, uh, there's no, you know, you expect the whole, and the winner is and for everything. But yes, you don't get true. that. They had like 30 categories, so. Yeah. So it's it's worth noting, yes. I did look to try and find the Banana Man. And no, he's Banana no Man costume. listed. Man. The Banana, the Banana Man, Man costume is no longer listed. I still put the banana man up as a emoji. As an emoji. I love the banana man. We yeah. use that emoji of Discord when necessary. That's it's so legendary. yeah. I guess I I'll just ask. I mean, right now, if you're listening, if you see this announcement in Discord, throw the banana man mm. emoji on on this episode. <laughs> the banana man. Well, Jordan, thank you for the the it, that, was, that well, game's always fun. If, do you want yeah. to see a few that didn't quite make the cut? Oh yes, yeah. yeah, honorable yeah, yeah. honorable mentions. Here we go. <laughs> Clay Fighter sixty three and one third. <laughs> what? That looks like fun. Three hundred and five dollars. Okay, that's fascinating. I'd buy that. Get ready to crumble. Get ready to crumble. Yeah, lots lots of puns and. I like your recently viewed, and you've got the uh, oh yeah, Bill Jeffrey. <laughs> it's <laughs> just uh... this guy's all over the map. He's with <laughs> snowballs. Just a blended Half dress hellscape. cardboard cutouts. We did look at this. Digital mon <laughs> what in the world? Digital Monster it's like 6. A, it's like copy someone's homework and not even, and still get the wrong answer. <laughs> Tested and working. Sold as is. <laughs> Tested and working. I don't know what. What is what working? Is, what do you do? Digimon? I guess oh, that it's is like what a digital monster is. <laughs> it's just like a Game Boy on an Etch a Sketch? What is this? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't it is a Game Boy cartridge, but wow. It is a Game Boy cartridge. Not I don't know. I would ever pay a hundred and twenty bucks. Time jump. <laughs> Clock. Save and exit. Analog pocket. Oh yeah, someone's just playing on a modern, like, hmm. hacked I Game know. Boy. I did. I thought about these. <laughs> <laughs> Party City headgear, Halloween variety goods, banana headgear. Nice. That looks good. I like those. <laughs> oh, boy. What else? Oh, this guy? V Vintage Hulk KO knockoff bootleg toy action figure of Incredible Hulk. Yeah, that's bootleg, all right. Goodness. <laughs> <laughs> that is nuts. Look at his face. <laughs> what else? <Wow. laughs> There's... Clearly uh, not. You get a lot of Game Boy or uh, N64 controllers, so that's kind of fun. Well, I was looking at those for my own sake of like, do I just buy a Nintendo 64 again for fun? Oh, 
I think uh, mine finally kicked the bucket, sadly. Did it? Yeah. That day. Well, let's see what else. We do appreciate this game and you doing this every every time we have a podcast that has a Christmas themed episode. It's become a tradition at this point, I think. Yeah. So next year, same time, same place. I think you went muted again, but that's okay. Nope. Nope. There we go. He, Sorry. He, he, nope. You're fine. I muted myself when I was on screen sharing. I was like, no, you don't get to talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jordan, I hope you have a wonderful holidays, wonderful Christmas with the fam. Yeah. We're happy to thank, have you here. Thank you for having me. And I, I hope that, uh, Conf and Chilo and all the listeners out there also have a wonderful happy holidays with their loved ones. Um, you know, hope it's safe and hope everyone gets to play some games. Oh yeah. And yeah. if you want to see what he's up to sometimes, the No Cube Zone Instagram account is where he'll post his board game. My endeavors. board game shenanigans. Yes. They do pop up there every once in a while. Yeah. Ooh. Well, thank you again, listener, for spending this hour and 40-some-odd minutes of your day listening to us have some fun in the holiday spirit, and we hope that the rest of 2023 is excellent, if you're listening to this in this year. If not, welcome to the past, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> great. It's great here. Farewell. Bon Bye. voyage. Questing the Multiverse is brought to you in part by Conniff Productions, Howes Wood Designs, and Joel Crawford. To follow along with our adventures, please follow us on Twitter at QTM Podcast and consider joining our Discord, a link of which can be found in the show notes or in our Twitter bio. Want your questions or comments read on the show? Email us at questingthemultiverse at gmail.com. Finally, if you enjoyed this episode, please consider giving us a review or a follow wherever you listen to podcasts. Thank you for listening.